This video is brought to you by my patrons. Consider becoming a patron today and support the content you love while gaining perks along the way. Our growth as a person can be measured by the changes in our personality and of the philosophies which dictate our outlook as we learn who we are. With the characters of Magic the Gathering, this growth is best illustrated in the colors which represent their motivations. And when these colors change, we can learn a lot about these characters. For this video, we will be taking a deep dive into the character of Nyssa Ravain, her growth over the course of her life and her subsequent changing of colors. This won't be so much of a lore video, but rather an inspection of who Nyssa is as a person and how she grows over the course of her tale. Her story is an arc of self-discovery and a perfect way to start off this new series. For this video, I have requested the help of a lore expert in MTG Lore Seeker who will drop in from time to time. He will now set the stage for us, and from here we will begin discussing Nyssa, the animus with good intentions who seems to always find herself on the outside. Life is a force that can take on many forms. It can be found walking through city streets, or flying high above the clouds, or swimming through the vast ocean. But life is more than what moves with leg or wing or fin. It can be vast, sprawling canopies, the grass and moss beneath your feet, and deeper still, it can be the subtle soul of the world, resting beneath the surface. Such life has few ways in which to defend itself, which is when the defenders of such life step forward. Wardens of nature and all growing things, they dedicate their lives to the safeguarding of that which needs it most. And one such defender is an elf of the Jaraga tribe of Zendikar, Nyssa Ravain. From a young age, Nyssa was always trying to find her place. As one of the last animists of Zendikar, she held a special connection to the land, a connection she always intended to pursue with the best of intentions, but with results that never quite lined up. This connection is a vital part of her character, and to some may seem like the only reason she is set in green. But I would say a stronger tie to green for her is Nissa's desire to find her place, to be of service to the land and the life within. It's conceptually similar, but the side of her that wishes to serve the land is stronger than any physical ties to it when it comes to green philosophy. This elf, like many of her people, grew up living an isolated life, one plagued by visions and dreams. Nyssa was an animist, a shaman with a deep connection with nature, which not only caused her to have these visions, but led to her being ostracized by her tribe. The young shaman departed on a journey, eventually ending up near the peaks of Akum, where she attempted to confront the same nameless horror that plagued her dreams. What she encountered there, however, was a force more terrifying than anything she had imagined, the shock of it igniting her latent planeswalker spark. Nyssa, from the start, only wanted what was best for her people and for Zendikar, but in return her clan feared her and her visions. Because of this, she started her life out as a bad omen, not a servant of the land, which is all she wanted. This can have a distinct effect on a person at a young age, this rejection of who we see ourselves as. You see, all we want is to feel accepted, whether we realize it internally or not. Because of this, I believe Nyssa suffered from a loss of identity, which significantly damaged her self-confidence. She knew what she wanted to do. She wanted to be in service of the land and its people, and yet the land brought nightmares, and the people brought rejection. This motivation is very much green, the wishing to find one's purpose in their place. But when it's prefaced by uncertainty, it can cause someone to act rash as they try and grasp at what they can to prove themselves to others and to themselves. 
This, of course, leads Nyssa down the path of leaving her clan, and of her confronting the darkness within the plane, both of which lead to failure. I think this is important to keep in mind moving forward when discussing Nyssa, because these cracks in her character will continue to drive her, until the day she heals herself. With her spark ignited though, it was time for her to begin the process of finding who she was, and who she wanted to be. Nyssa was sent on a journey across the many planes of the multiverse. She would encounter worlds that seemed familiar, upon which resided elves similar, yet different from the kind she knew. Yet other worlds were alien to her, housing cities that seemed to stretch into the horizon. Her journeys sent her to many new worlds. We don't know everything about these travels, but from what we're told, she found hate on Lorwind, discomfort on Ravnica, and imprisonment on some metallic plane. None of these planes gave her the answers she needed. None of them fed her soul. Nyssa at this point was steeping in her regret. Should I have abandoned my people? Should I have been so hasty to leave my home plane when it clearly needed me? Regret is a word I think is key to the early life of Nyssa. Her purpose never fulfilled, leaving her to one mistake after the other. The green present in Nyssa ached for purpose, but it always seemed just out of reach. Regret is a natural emotion we all feel. There is always something in our past we have done which shapes our view of ourselves in a negative way. Regret, you see, never goes away. It gnaws at us. This regret can do one of two things. It can defeat us or bring us resolve. Unfortunately for Nyssa, she feels the former at the moment, but worry not, this isn't the end of her. From here, she would need to ground herself, to plant her feet back at home. Discontent with what she encountered beyond the blind eternities, Nyssa elected to stay on her home world. When the Aldrazi brood began to break free of their bindings, Nyssa teamed up with the mysterious Soren Markov to attempt to seal them away. It wasn't long before she realized she should have never left. Her place was here on Zendikar. Meeting Soren in some ways is a blessing and a curse. I think there is some comfort that can be had when we find others like us. The problem is that Soren isn't the most welcoming presence. It's at this point where Nyssa is coming into her own. She knows at least what she must do and who she must be. She is an animus, the bridge to the soul of a plane and its ley lines. Her role is to protect Zendikar. This is the point where green is more than just a color due to her being an elf, but rather it is rooted in her role. As we know, green is the color which aims to be a piece of the greater puzzle, and in return we must give ourselves to it. And for Nyssa, giving herself to Zendikar would bring her peace. Unfortunately, peace would not truly come to Zendikar or Nyssa for some time. After a long journey to the Eye of Ugin, however, Nyssa had a change of heart, coming to believe that the Aldrazi would leave Zendikar if they were freed. The elf could not have been more wrong, and now her home was at risk not just from the brood, but the three Eldrazi Titans. For over two years, Nyssa had battled the Eldrazi, coming to fully embrace her shamanic powers in the process. Eventually, she would be joined by other planeswalkers seeking to end the threat of the Eldrazi, Gideon Jora, Jace Balarin, and Chandra Nalar. Up until this point, Nyssa had spent much of her life pulled around, either by her visions or her quest to find her place. I honestly really feel for Nyssa at this point, even with the dire mistakes she has made, as she is a character with the best of intentions, and yet those intentions are always clouded by the will of others, or her desire to do what's right marred by her inexperience. Things begin to turn here for Nyssa though, as during the fight for Zendikar she finds others who actually depend on her, and her strength. This is a powerful thing, as she is beginning to find her worth. Not just as a tool of Zendikar, but someone who others value, which I believe is almost more powerful to her, considering what she has struggled with up until this point. I believe that without encountering these other planeswalkers, 
Nissa would have stagnated and perhaps never would have grown into the person she is now. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. The battle for Zendikar was on. Coming together as the Gate Watch, these planeswalkers stood against the Titans Ulamog and Kozilek, with Nissa tapping into the very essence of Zendikar to fuel a spell that not only trapped the Andrazi, but allowed Chandra to incinerate them. After years of failure and regret, Nissa finally found her first instance of victory. With the aid of her new friends, she had fulfilled her purpose on Zendikar. While this should have been the end of Nissa's arc, it wasn't. You see, she had accomplished what she had set out to do, which did help boost her confidence. The issue is that she had neglected her own needs this entire time. When you give yourself to a goal so fully that you ignore your heart, you can find that there is a hole left in its wake. It was now time to push further, aid other planes, and in the process, hopefully find herself and who she wanted to be. And perhaps she would be able to fill that void with a greater purpose. Having saved her home, Nyssa would travel with the Gatewatch across the plains, gaining new allies like Liliana Vess and a Johnny Goldmane. This group would do its best to help others a goal that eventually led them into a confrontation against Nicol Bolas, a clash that would soon take them into the War of the Spark. It was on these travels where she would truly come to learn more about herself. First would come Innistrad, a plane tormented by the Eldrazi Titan Emrakul. Here she attempted to speak with the soul of the world and found only darkness and madness their previous tactics finding no ground here against Emrakul. Eventually victory would come after they were able to trap the Titan within Innistrad's moon, but not without its tests upon Nissa's mind and her confidence in herself. I believe it is here, when confronted by horror, where Nissa begins to really question herself once again, her place and her purpose. I consider this time the softening of her character, and is what will lead her to be able to shape herself and mold herself anew. Which leads us into Kaladesh and the beginning of her self-discovery. On Kaladesh, she was granted a new perspective on nature. At first, she felt stifled by the vast city, much like when she first traveled to Ravnica. That is, until she learned to see nature in a new way, and perhaps in this way was able to see herself in a new way. It was here as well where a love interest would bud between Nyssa and Chandra. Nyssa, with all of her goals, never stopped to be loved but found it when imprisoned with Chandra on the plane. Nyssa, as a character, I believe doesn't show herself enough self-love. She doubts herself, she regrets her past actions, and this self-destructive nature can lead to depression, and sometimes it takes a loving hand to pull you from those depths. Next, they would come to Amonkhet, and here we would see the fruition of her growth as a character. During her search of the plane, which was sickened by a curse, she encounters the trial of knowledge, here, she is forced into introspection, to take a logical and critical look at herself from the outside. This is the turning point for her, a critical path change, a fork in the road, and the culmination of the seeds which were planted in Amonkhet and Kaladesh. Do I stay down this path which has brought me nothing, or do I take another road that I have dared not travel? You see, up until this time, she had been nothing more than a pawn of others, and further than that, Nyssa was one who was always swept up in who she thought she should be, and of her desire to fulfill her role. Always moved from place to place, and never taking time to do what she wanted, more importantly, what she needed and didn't realize. She learns here that instead of being moved as a piece on the board, she must instead go forward as the hand which moves the pieces. While the fight for Amonkhet is a failure, this is indeed where a new Nyssa is born on a plane of undeath. She will from here on out be her own person, and not be the tool of others. On Dominaria, she confronts Liliana for her manipulations, and decides to leave the Gatewatch. This is such a strong moment, because in her youth, I don't believe that she would have taken things this far. She might have just bit her tongue and continued on, but she is stronger than that now. She doesn't need to follow. Her lessons from Amonkhet coming to fruition. From here, she would return to Zendikar, to reset herself. This would lead her to shedding her blue mana, but not the lessons which were gained from it. 
From this place, she would be called to Ravnica because of the pull of the planar beacon. Here, the fight for Ravnica would take place against the ancient foe of Nicol Bolas. She was not filled with anxiety or doubt this time. She acted with confidence even though it would lead her to make more mistakes, but in this war anything that could be done was done. During this fight she would raise Vidugazi, only to lose the Great Tree, but things would turn around when her ability to channel the ley lines would help turn the fight and victory was found. But not after losing a dear friend in Gideon, and losing love in Chandra. These two compounded losses is what I believe completes her character arc, and in many ways pushed Black into Nissa's color identity. With everything that's happened, with every regret and loss, Nissa has learned that she must depend on herself, and act in a manner that fulfills who she now was. No more getting pulled around, no more depending on the aid of others, no more finding her purpose. She knows who she is, and who she wants to be. Black in many ways can add a lot of self-confidence and self-reliance, and it's the color which dictates its life based on its own needs. I would say this is important for Nyssa because it brings it all around full circle. From the very beginning she wanted to find herself and what she was meant to do, but every action done, not on her own terms, led to regret. Then she accepts differing perspectives, and this is reflected in the addition of blue and the self-awareness and introspection which she lacked or avoided. Sure, she sheds this blue for black eventually, but this almost mimics the journey we all go on as we grow up. The mistakes we regret, and the growth that happens when we learn to love ourselves and accept who we are and what we want to be. And because of that, we can see aspects of ourselves in her. The tale of Nyssa is one we can all relate to, even if her tale is more grand than her own. That is because her story is a human one, even behind those pointed ears of hers. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I am excited for the potential for the future of this series because I just love taking a human or deeper look into the actual personality, philosophies, and psychology of some of these awesome characters. If they're written well enough, then there's a lot to really chew on there. Once again, thank you so much MTG Lore Seeker for helping me with this video. If you guys haven't checked out his channel yet, I definitely urge you to do so. He's very knowledgeable when it comes to lore and, I mean, as you heard, he's got a great voice for it too. With that friends, I will catch you in the multiverse. Bye.